Oh, congratulations. Um, obviously, an incredible fight, incredible finish. I mean, how, uh, how excited are you right now? <laughs> Very excited. That was, uh, that was a big one for me, man. Like, um, it's not about how you come back from wins, you know. It's about how you come back from losses. I came back from one of the most embarrassing losses that I've ever had. I was able to show up and take out Marlon Moraes, who is a monster. That guy is really good. Um, and I knew that coming into this, and, and, and I'm pumped that I was able to get the win. Yeah. You talked a lot about the fact, you know, you just your head wasn't right, the emotions weren't right. What did you do different? Were you in the right headspace when you went out there tonight? I was locked in the entire time. Not, not only just tonight, I was locked in the entire trip. Uh, I didn't let my head go flat. It's really easy on these trips to get distracted, uh, to get a little bit too restful, to get a little bit too relaxed, to run away from your fears a little bit. Um, I didn't do that this time. I was locked in the entire time. Nice. So you go in there against a guy that we know is like this seasoned, you know, scary striker. Did you go in there thinking, I can knock this guy out? I knew that I could, but that wasn't the plan. Uh, I don't know. I, I was just going to be free, man. I was just going to uh, keep myself safe. He's really dangerous. I was just going to keep myself safe and just uh, wear on him, you know, just fight him how I fight him. That's what I was going to do. And is that really something you added to your arsenal during the pandemic, like that finishing technique there? Yeah, dude. Uh, Colorado was shut down for like most of March and most of April, and I was in my basement throwing those spinning back kicks on the bob or having my girlfriend hold those spinning kicks for those entire two months. And I added it into my game while there was nowhere else to go, just in, you know. Uh, so thank, mm, no, I'm not going to say that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I made good use of my time. <laughs> I was going to say something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't do that. Listen, uh, you, you laid out the plan nicely. You know why Dillashaw, why Frankie makes sense. But I got to ask, I mean, we don't know when this title fight's going to happen. Um, do you keep yourself ready? Do you keep yourself available as an option? I mean, would you be a last-second fill-in for a title fight if needy? Absolutely. When, when that gets booked, I've, honestly, I've been doing that for like a year or two now, um, where it's like, okay, this is, this is a big fight coming up. I don't have a fight coming up. I'm going to keep my weight low, and I'm going to stay ready. I've been doing that in camp. Um, I've been doing it almost the whole time I've, I've been in the UFC. But, yeah, definitely going to do that, of course, now, because I think that I'm probably the number one guy if one of those guys gets hurt. Um, but I would feel really bad uh, if they did me and Jan, uh, and they did that to Sterling. Um, that being said, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog sport, you know, so if they give me that shot, I'm taking that shot. Um, but I think it should be Sterling and Jan, and then uh, the only other two guys that have an argument are Frankie and TJ, so one of those guys before they end up fighting each other. Um, and, yeah, hopefully I'm not just this little name after this, you know. Hopefully I have some pull in, in the sport because that's kind of where I feel like I've been, where it's like they're giving me really good fights, but I never felt like I was, like, if, if I called someone out, it was going to get a lot of juice, you know, but I think I got some juice tonight. I was going to say, last thing for me, I mean, yeah, I believe this might be kind of a star-making performance for you for people that may not have known about you before. Um, do you feel like now you can maybe talk a little bit more, maybe challenge? I mean, you're, you don't seem a, a trash-talking kind of guy to me, but do you feel like somebody that can be out there a little bit more? Uh, I'm going to keep staying in my lane, man. Um, I do this for love. I don't really care about anything else. I don't care about being famous or Instagram followers or uh, making a million dollars, you know, like that, that's not what it's about for me. It's about literally fighting the best guys, beating the best guys, and retiring knowing that I did that. That's what's important to me. Hey, man. Uh, you, you mentioned Frankie and, and TJ, and, and those are the two guys above you. Is there a preference out of those two? Nope. Either one. Wh whichever one's going to get me closer, you know? Uh, I don't really know how the mind of the UFC matchmakers works 100%. So I just know win fights and get good finishes, and they'll give you good fights. So uh, it makes no difference to me. Honestly, it, I only said those two names because they're the only two in my head that, that have an argument. And um, yeah, so just one of those two. Is there any reservations about fighting TJ, considering his recent indiscretions? Um, no. Uh, me and him used to be training partners, but uh, I think that it, it was a while ago now, and uh, I'm in a much different spot, and um, we both can't be champion. And, uh, you know, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog sport. So whatever I got to do to get to the top and win the belt, that's what I'm going to do. Congrats, man. Thanks. Corey, we're here. You once told me that uh, you, your favorite fighter to watch, you liked watching your own highlights. So is this now at the top of your list of highlights to watch, this specific performance? Yeah, I, I think so. I haven't been able to watch it yet. I just got told that I got the bonus, though, yes. so that's, that's exciting. Well, 
how much of that is going to your girlfriend for holding it? <laughs> she, if she's not in the corner, she doesn't get her percentage. <laughs> Ouch. And then uh, why'd you walk out to give me the loot? Uh, because that's when I do best, man. I do best. Uh, I know that I'm like a skinny, pale, white kid from Colorado. Uh, but like part of me is gangster, you know? So like I, I, I got to tap into that to that uh, gangster inside of me sometimes. I know that I just sounded like a huge nerd. Where, <laughs> wherever Banks is, is probably making fun of me right now. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I can be tough and gritty, and that song brings it out in me. Well, 10 out of 10 song choice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. If uh, Jan is fighting Sterling next, how do you see this fight play out? Who do you see as the strong, stronger mm, guy in spare? I don't know. I get asked to... Uh, pick fights all the time, and my answer is always, I don't know. I know that that's not very exciting, but uh, I, I really have no idea.